Hi, I just have a question. So if you pull, say, two people out of a car during a car stop and the driver is the registered owner and he gives you permission to search the whole car, can you search everything in the car, including, say, like if the passenger has a purse in the car? Are you allowed to search her purse? Uh, Nicole, the quick short answer is no. Um, and, and here's why. So, so you said the, the registered owner you take out and you're asking that registered owner to give consent to search that car, right? So they can give you consent to search anywhere they have access, dominion, control over inside that car, which is going to be most everything inside that car since it's their car. Uh, however, if you're, uh, you've got a passenger inside there and they have items belonging to them, well, then that, uh, that driver doesn't have any uh, authority over that, uh, that bag. They don't have the ability to give you consent to look inside there because that person has a reasonable expectation of privacy in their purse, their bag, whatever it may be. Uh, so no, in a consent search, the, the driver cannot give you uh, consent to search and things that they don't have any authority over. So then what if neither one of them claims ownership of something in the car? Ooh. Abandon it, my friend. Um, so, <laughs> hey, and, and here's something, um, so the great question. So here's something that uh, we like to talk about at Blue to Gold. You know, is that your bag? Is, uh, you know, is that yours? You know, yes, no, whatever it may be. We like to say, and everybody, dramatic pause. Here it comes. Do you have anything to do? with that bag. And you're going to get a better interest or you're going to get a better, <laughs> Steve, I'm reading your thing. Uh, you're going to get a better answer in that. Do you have anything to do with it? Well, yeah, that's my wife's purse. I'm just sitting here holding on to it while she's shopping. Uh, so if you ask this question, hey, is you have anything to do with this bag that's in the back seat here? No, it's not mine. I don't have anything to do with it. I've never seen it before in my life. No, it's not mine. Well, effectively, you know, they, they've taken verbal uh, measures to uh, disclaim ownership or to show that they don't have any uh, ties to that bag and it's abandoned. Um, I'll have to think of the case. There was a case, uh, I think, out of Pennsylvania somewhere where that's basically that happened. Both occupants of the vehicle disclaimed ownership of the bag. They searched it and inside the bag. They found an ID card and I think drugs and a gun inside there that tied it to one of the occupants in that vehicle. And the, the argument was there's abandoned. And the court said, yeah. What do you think, John? Anything else? What am I missing? Oh, I, I think I think it's good. I think you're right on the money. I mean, basically what you're going to try to do is, first off, people can only consent to things over which they have uh, a property interest, right? Over things that they have a dominion control. So I can't give you consent to search things that I have no control over. Like I can't give you consent to search my um, my buddy's backpack if he wouldn't, you know, I, I can't search it. So I can't let you do it. Um, if you have reason to believe that there is something in that vehicle that belongs to a certain individual, then you have an obligation to seek out the owner of that and confirm that the consent is valid as to it. Um, treat consent like a gift, right? Courts treat it with a great degree of deference and you should too. The onus is going to be on you to convince that trier of fact that you had freely and voluntarily given consent to search whatever item you're given. And if you look in the purse and there's a male and there's a female and the female is the passenger and there is a purse at her foot and the driver says, yeah, you can go ahead and search that vehicle. That absolutely does not can also include that purse, because can you say that that female freely and objectively gave you consent to search that? No. Right. And the onus, the burden is going to fall to you to convince the court that you had that. So be very, very careful with consent. And since we're talking about uh, Brooks brings up a good point here. So your question, uh, Nicole, was about consent. And, and I think we've, we've covered that. Now, Brooks throws out something that, well, well, you've got PC to search the car. So let's say you've got PC to search that car for narcotics. Because why not, right? I did. I worked dope for a long time. So that's where I, always where I go back to is dope, uh, you know, theoretically. Uh, so, yeah, if you have PC to search that car and you meet all the criteria for an automobile exception there, and that bag or that purse or that item could contain it, uh, within the scope of the search, then yes, you can search it uh, under a probable cause search of a vehicle. But that's significantly different than that granting consent by someone that doesn't have uh, authority over it.